wanted to start an ant colony. No? Oh. Oh. That's too bad then. Uh, this is this is awkward. But assuming you do want to know how to start an ant colony, because you know why else would you click a video with that in the title? I'll show you how to start an call ant colony like this one. Oh, there's nothing in my hand. I mean, like this one. Oh, this is the wrong two. Like this one. Oh wait, uh, that's a that's a dead queen. I should not be showing this. This is like killing my credibility. Like this one. Oh, these are some Yu-Gi-Oh things. Like this one. Oh, this is bull. Like this one. Oh wait, this this is Godzilla. What am I doing? Oh, I have to redo this whole clip now. Okay. I'll show you how to start an ant colony just like this one. Nailed it. Okay, now it's time to start my guide on how to start your very own pet ant colony. Now, first of all, you're going to need a way to find a queen ant. You can uh, find one yourself from a nuptial flight. Now, depending on the species, nuptial flights for queens happen at different times around the world. And basically, what a nuptial flight is, is all the queens and the male um, ants fly you know, from the colony into the sky, and then they mate. And then all the males die, and the queens take off their wings and run around. And during a nuptial flight, you'll see, you know, swarms of ants on the ground. Some of them will be bigger, and those are the queens. And then if you see one without any wings, it's usually safe to assume she's fertile and you can catch her. Now, for most species, the difference between a queen and a worker is huge. Like in this picture, you can see that the queen is visibly larger than both the male and the worker, and that she has a very big thorax and an extended uh, abdomen. Now, <laughs> assuming you don't know much about, you know, insect anatomy. The thorax is the middle segment and the abdomen is the back se segment. And in ants, the abdomen is often referred to as the gaster. So yeah, a lot of new vocabulary. However, in some species, it's a lot harder to distinguish. For example, one of the most common starter in ants, Myrmica, um, as you can see, the queen is very hard to tell apart from the workers because they're similar in size. For example, here's the difference between a Myrmica queen and a Myrmica worker. As you can see, the queen is bigger, and if you look really closely, you can see the outline of two wing scars on her thorax, and that's a telltale way to distinguish a queen from a worker, if you can see the wing scars like on her middle section. Now, if you can't find any queen ants during the summer nuptial flights, and you live in Europe or any other country where it's legal to buy ants, well then, there are a number of websites that will sell you queen ants, and I've actually put a link to where you can find a lot of these websites in the description. Now, if you live in a country where it's illegal to ship ants across the border, well, that's simple. Just, you know, mark the package something else and don't tell the authorities. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> don't break the law. However, Ants Canada does have a global ants nursery program, so you can see if there are any ant breeders near you. I, I also put a link to that site in the description. Alright, now that you know how to get your queen ant, let's talk about housing. A test tube like this one can house ant colonies until they have around between 50 to 100 workers, depending on the species. Now, making a test tube setup is very easy. I already made it a video um, telling you how to do this, and I put the link in the description and in the annotation above. Alright, now go watch that video. I'll wait. Alright, are you done? Well, it doesn't matter, because you can pause this video whenever you want, but let's keep going. Now, when you first get your queen, you need to figure out if she's fully claustral, semi-claustral, or parasitic. So, what do those words mean? Now, fully claustral queens are like this queen here, my Campanas Modoc queen. They have usually have really big gasters, and basically they store a lot of fat and other like nutrients inside of their gaster, so they don't need any food at all until they have workers. So they feed their larvae and their brood just by themselves with the stuff they have inside of them. Now, a semi-claustral queen, like this Myrmica queen, is a queen that doesn't store much fat in herself and must, you know, like forage for food. And with these queens, you have to feed them, even like before they have workers. An example of a parasitic queen is this Laceus umbratus queen. What these queens do in nature is they take over a different species colony by killing their queen and pretending to be the queen of the colony. These types of queens are hard to keep in captivity and are not recommended for total beginners. But if you do want to keep them, I'll link, I put a link in the description to a site about parasitic ants. You need to feed your ants both a sugar source and a protein source. Now for sugar, I like to use honey or sugar water, 
And for protein, you can use dead insects, or even alive insects if uh, the colony has enough workers to bring it down. And what I usually do is every day I check in my cricket container for my leopard gecko, and I see if there's any freshly dead crickets, and I take those out and feed them to my colonies. Now, to feed your colonies if they're still in the tube, I usually use a barbecue skewer to give them honey. Like, I dip it in the uh, bowl of honey I use for my larger colony. So for these small colonies, what I do is I give them this honey. And then I also give them a protein in the form of cricket legs for smaller colonies and not the entire cricket. Now, this is because it's much easier for them to like move and eat smaller pieces of protein than for them to like eat, consume an entire cricket. If you want to ensure steady growth for your colony, make sure you remove all the uneaten um, pieces of food as well as all the garbage like once every couple of days. That way, you'll limit the amount of mold growing in the tube. Now, you know, the less mold that's growing in the tube, the more likely the queen will produce a lot of brood and make a lot of workers, and then your colony will grow bigger sooner. Once your colony has a decent number of workers, you need to move them into a formicarium. Now, formicaria, which are the professional term for ant farms, can be made by yourself or they can be purchased from a number of online retailers. Now, if you're a beginner, I recommend that you buy your first or first one or two formicaria online because they are like not that easy to make. However, if like you're really good at do-it-yourself projects and you know you have the, a lot of the materials at home like grout or waitong, etc., then you can try your hand at making your own. And there are a number of guides available to help you on this. Important things for managing your colony and ensuring really quick growth is to always maintain one area of the formicarium with really high humidity, like spray with water every one or two days, and also to ensure that they all constantly have food. Like um, overfeeding is obviously like way better than underfeeding for ants. Another really important thing, and this might seem like weird at first, but remember that you shouldn't get a formicarium that's too big. Like ants actually like tight spaces and small chambers. So if you get like a huge formicarium, and then they'll just use most of the chambers as garbage dumps. And that'll cause a lot of problems later on. One of the worst problems is if you have mold growing inside of the formicarium. Because it's most formicaria that are sold these days, like it's really hard to clean the interior. So you have to rely on the ants doing it themselves. And if they don't have enough workers, like they don't need the space, they're not going to clean it up and there will be a lot of mold growing. Now another very common question is what species should I start with? And in my opinion, there are a few species that make really good starter uh, species and they are either Laceus or Formica. Now these two genus of ants are very easy to take care of, they grow fast and they can adapt easily to any situation. So like, if there's mold, if suddenly there's light, if there's a lack of heat, like they can adapt to it easily. Another great beginner species is Campanotis. Now, these ants are also like pretty good beginner ants, but they grow slower than Laceus and Formica. But like, they're also really easy to care for and they get like major ants, which are soldier ants, and that's pretty cool. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. And hopefully with this guide, you can start your very own pet ant colony. Now, you might have noticed that I finally got an intro, so yeah, I got a friend from school to do it for me, so big thanks to him, and yeah, bye!